Hi, my name is Jay Rosen. I teach journalism at New York University and I write about the press and developments in new media. And today I'm going to show you how I keep up with the flow of news and um, circulate my own news. Uh, so let's begin with where I begin when I get to my desk in the morning, which is usually around um, 840. The first thing I do is I go to the Twitter search for my name. Uh, my name on Twitter is J Rose and NYU. And I look at what has come in since I last looked at this page. So I see now I have 12 new tweets. Um, and these are people who are talking to me. Often they're going to tell me something I want to know or give me a link or react to something I've posted. Um, and uh, sometimes I have to click on what they've sent me so I know um, what they're trying to alert me to, like this piece right here. I don't know what this is. So I'll open that in a new window. And I find it's a reaction to something I posted a few hours ago, which is why do rumors circulated by email appeal so much more to the right wing than the left wing. Um, and so this is a, a reaction to that and I'm going to keep that up and I'm going to read that later. So um, after I do that, um, I usually check um, this page, which is uh, Five Star FM. It's a way for me to know how many other people on Twitter have retweeted or starred as important the things that I've sent out uh, over Twitter. So this helps me keep track of what's resonating with the people who follow me and what isn't. So I, I might look at that next. Then frequently the next page I would check used to be called Romanesco. Now it's called Pointer's Media Wire. And this is a um, page that uh, aggregates and comments on new, interesting, controversial stories about the press or professional journalism, which is sort of my beat. And I keep a close watch on this page. I'll probably check it four or five times throughout the day. Um, and I'm scanning it now, and I realize I've pretty much seen everything that's on here, so I'm going to skip over that. The second most valuable page for me um, is this site. It's called Media Gazer, um, and it is a aggregator of news about media, new and old. And um, if you look in the right-hand corner here under Latest News Finder, these are the news stories that have come on on Media Gazer, and I pretty much follow this very closely because it um, helps me keep track of everything on my beat. Uh, I also check two sites by the same company built by the same guy, Gabe Rivera, who's a, a very smart man and probably the best at aggregation of anybody I know. And he has another site called Memorandum, which is, as it says, the political web. So these are all political stories that are um, getting talked about and linked to by other bloggers. That's his formula. At the top of the page are the things that are getting most discussed by other sites. And then he has a third site, uh, which is very popular with tech bloggers called Tech Meme. So I check all of these all the time. Um, then I might move on over to Atlantic Wire subtitled What Matters Now, which um, covers a lot of the things that interest me. So this is an up-to-the-minute up aggregation and curation site about all kinds of things in the news that I might want to know about. So I will, I will check that. Um, I forgot to add another thing that I'll check first thing in the morning is... Um, this page. Well, I'll look at the front page of the Times, of course. No, that's not it. I don't want the Lincoln. Uh, go to the business section. And this page, which is the 
media section of the business pages of the New York Times has right here I see something that interests me a great deal the San Diego Union Tribune which is one of the more important newspapers in the United States was just sold for a hundred million dollars that interests me a great deal because um, I knew it had been bought by a private equity firm a, a hedge fund essentially so I'm wondering if um, they made money or lost money on this deal so I'm going to scroll down quickly and I'm going to try and find uh, what did it pay? Okay, so here we find the private equity firm paid $50 million when it bought the paper in 2009. So they bought it for $50 million. They just sold it for $110 million. That's significant. And I'm also seeing as I scan this that um, the guy who bought this paper is a political conservative. So those are two facts that I want to use. Now I've got them in my mind, and I'm going to probably make a Twitter post out of those two things. The fact that this paper was sold to a political conservative who might want to use it to push conservative causes, and the fact that the um, private equity firm made um, fi at least $50 million on the deal. Um, moving along, I would also tend to check sites like this. This is a political blogger for the Washington Post whose name is Greg Sargent. He's somebody that um, I followed for a long time. He's very good at what he does. And every morning he does um, something called the morning roundup and then he does something at the end of the day. This one was 724 from last night, a happy hour roundup. So this is a collection of the new most important, interesting p political links that have come in during the day. And this is a very efficient way for me to keep up with the news. So I'm following media news, political news, technology news throughout the day. Um, here's another blog. This is uh, another blog from the Washington Post written by Eric Wemple. It's a reported opinion blog on the news media. Uh, and um, I check this a couple times a day because he's basically on the same beat that I am. I noticed something that interests me a great deal of a story that I have followed on my Twitter feed and tweeted about before, which is the Associated Press telling its um, reporters not to scoop the wire by posting news on Twitter. And they received a lot of criticism among people like myself um, and others who are kind of tuned into social media for preventing their own people from posting the news when they learn it through some of their rules like don't scoop the wire. So I wrote a little Twitter post about this <coughs> linking to that piece. Here it is. The AP is getting testy about the reactions to its social media freakouts. And I'm going to post this now. We'll see what kind of reactions uh, we get to that. There it is. Uh, now, um, the other way that I keep up with the news is through my lists. So if I've been away from Twitter for a while, and I have to catch up, or I have been offline for three or four hours, or um, maybe I was on an airplane or something that didn't have Wi-Fi, the first thing that I would do is I would go to this list that I created for myself called Top Journalism Linkers. And it's the 15 to 20 people most likely to give good link about journalism and its struggles. That's what I've called it. And as you can see, it follows 19 people, but it has uh, over 1,100 followers. But I made it mostly for myself. So when I want to catch up with what's happening and what I might have missed when I was offline, the first thing I will do is go to this list. And um, by the time I scroll down, you can see some of, most of the people that I follow on this list are providing links. So almost every post is a link as opposed to chit chat. And almost every post is something that I probably want to know about. 
By the time I scroll down um, a few screens, uh, I'm now five hours ago, six hours ago. Anything really important is probably going to be in there. So if I have five minutes to catch up, I can do that simply by using this list that I built exactly for that purpose. Then if I have 15 minutes to catch up, which I often do, I'll go to a different list I built called Best Mindcasters I Know. As you can see, it follows about 100 people, so that's about five times as many as this list. And it has over 2,000 followers. And it's a much broader list, um, not just media news, but technology, politics. Um, these guys, this is a political blogger. Here's another political blogger. This guy writes about business in the press. This is TechCrunch, a technology site. Um, Felix Salmon writes about business. He's a blogger. Um, Brian Stelter is a media reporter for the New York Times. Megan Garber is from Neiman Lab. Uh, Bora is a science blogger. So this is a much more diverse list and um, this keeps me up uh, in a more rounded way with what I might have uh, missed on Twitter. Meanwhile, over on the right side of um, my tabs, I have things that I found earlier that I, I haven't decided what to do with yet, and I just keep them there so I keep thinking about them until I decide what I want to do with them. This is a really long essay about the um, Los Angeles Times and the abuse it suffered at the hands of its new owners. And it goes on and on and on, which isn't a bad thing from my point of view, but I need to figure out um, if I want to use that in my Twitter feed, and if so, how. I'm going to uh, present it because I want to warn people how long it is. So I have to give them a reason why they should read it. I haven't thought of that reason yet, so that I haven't done anything with it. Um, this is something that appeared earlier today in the audit, which is a blog about the business press in Columbia Journalism Review. And um, I'm just kind of waiting for something else to emerge on this same um, issue to see if maybe I want to um, either blog about it at my blog or perhaps put two links together um, on, on Twitter. And I haven't found yet what I want, so I'm just kind of leaving it there. Um, this is something else that I've um, opened a while ago. It's uh, a Wired Magazine profile of Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. And I'm trying to think of how to use that, so I just sort of leave it there. Um, then, here's something that I heard today when I woke up. I use NPR as my alarm clock. And I heard this story about um, Congress fighting over this company called Solyndra, which is um, a, a solar energy company that went bankrupt after it had received hundreds of millions of dollars in federal money, $500 million in, in loans from the government. And it's a big political controversy. And I was listening to this um, uh, piece on NPR, and I heard a perfect distillation of something that I had blogged about and written about a lot called He Said, She Said Journalism. And I made a note to myself when I get to the office to look for the transcript of this piece because I might be able to make a post out of it. And I recently found it. They, it takes them a while. It usually isn't until midday that they have the transcripts up. So I'm looking through this transcript and I see, um, here's what I want. It's Republicans said this. And the Democrats shot back and said that. But you'll notice, if you read it or if you listen to it, that um, the Republicans said this, the Democrats shot back, but NPR doesn't tell us who's right. And they're basically saying two completely different things. And so this, to me, is kind of a default in journalistic responsibility. So. Um, it's the kind of thing I might make a Tumblr post out of. Uh, 
This is my Tumblr. It's called Quote and Comment. And I just use it for quick comments on things that I found in the news. And I know from previous um, posts on this issue that there's a big interest in this whole problem of he said, she said journalism on Tumblr. So I kind of um, started making this post. I'm going to show it to you in preview because it's not quite done yet. But um, here's what it looks like so far. It's just, it's, it, the title is, We Have No Idea Who's Right Journalism. And it's just a quote from, um, from this piece, House Panel Questions 2 about Solyndra Loan. Um, meanwhile, I'm on Skype and I see people who are coming on and occasionally I use Skype for interviews or get interviewed by Skype. Um, so that's what that was. So I'm, I've been working on this Tumblr post for a little while. And often I do this. I, I, I make the, um, the basic uh, kernel of the post and I put it up there and then I think about it for a while. Um, because I, I, I want to um, think about how I'm presenting it and what else I want to say. And when I'm satisfied with it, I'll, um, I'll post it on Tumblr, and then I will promote it on Twitter. Meanwhile, let's see what happened from my AP post. The AP is getting testy about reactions to its social media freakouts. And we already have one retweet, and then we come to here, and we can take a look at how that's doing. And four people have retweeted that. That's not a lot. That means it's not really catching fire, probably because others have already uh, tweeted this. But I'm not too concerned about that because it's still something um, very continuous with other things that I've posted uh, on Twitter. Um, Meanwhile, this is telling me that uh, I have two new posts on, I might check this. And um, by watching all of these things throughout the day, pointer, media gazer, memorandum, Tech meme, Atlantic Wire, columnists like Greg Sargent, and of course the New York Times. I keep up with the news, and what I can't find from those sites, uh, I get from my. Twitter feed. So that's how I keep up with the news.